Hello everyone, this is Dr. Leo Kormanik with Running Rehab. So basically in this exercise, we're going to show you sciatic nerve flossing. All right? The term flossing is just like it sounds. Basically where you take an object, like the sciatic nerve, and you move it on both ends through tissue. Just like if you had a floss, you're flossing it between your teeth. The floss is moving between the teeth. If you move the sciatic nerve in certain ways, you can get it to slide or floss through tissue. But the, 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 the important information is that you're sliding it. So that means you have to relax it on one end and tension it on the other end, thus moving it and then reversing that. Okay? So that's the basic mechanisms of flossing. I'm being very technical with this because a lot of people will take a tissue and stretch it on both ends tension it on both ends, thus not allowing the, the tissue to slide through other structures. So basically, the sciatic nerve comes out of the low back, forms a big chunk of nerve about the size of your thumb, and it runs right through the glute, right deep into the top part of the hamstring, right by your sit bone, down through the hamstring, splits in the hamstring. Some of the fibers run through the front, some of the fibers run through the back, okay? So if you have numbness, down the leg, you have tension in the hamstrings that just won't go away, tension in the glute that just won't go away. All of these things can be related to the sciatic nerve. Obviously, if you have like sharp shooting pain down the leg, that could also be related to the sciatic nerve. So basically in this exercise, it's simple. You're just gonna be on your side. And to tension the nerve in one direction, you can flex the spine. And then the tension in the other direction, you're gonna basically bring the leg up to stretch it, all right? So if I'm going to work the right side, I'm going to tension the spine, thus relaxing the nerve on this end. Then I'll relax the spine and then stretch the nerve on this end, okay? So basically I will flex the hip, straighten the knee, and then bring the toes up towards the shin, if I can handle the motion. Sometimes it might be a little bit too irritated to handle all of that. And then I'll relax it after a second or two, moving slow and then tensioning it at the spine by folding forward. Then I'll reverse it. And again, just sort of moving at that pace. Now, oddly enough, your spinal cord runs all the way up to your brain, obviously. So moving your neck matters here. Like if I'm just in this position, I bring my neck forward, I will feel tension in the side of the nerve more. But if I relax my neck back, then it releases. So you want to take your whole spine, relax it, and your whole spine, moving it. Just like you want to take your whole leg and move it. So to show you a little bit better visually how this is working, I'll show you seated, which is another good way to do it. But some people are in a lot of pain and they can't handle it seated, so then you'll do it sideline, but just for the sake of showing you. So you will fold forward all through the spine and the sciatic nerve is relaxed, okay? And then you'll bring your neck back and relax the nerve here and then straighten it from the hip to the knee and then bring the toes up. And then like that. That's sciatic nerve flossing. Now, if you have a, like an injury to the nerve in a very specific segment, like say you have it diagnosed in the tarsal tunnel, which is right here, you have numbness or shooting nerve pain in the foot, then you can isolate that by doing the same mechanism, but when you get to here, really torquing that foot so that way you're bending it out and really stretching the nerve through there. So that would be how you release it with tarsal tunnel or Baxter's nerve impingement right there for plantar fasciitis, okay? So if anybody gives you sciatic nerve flossing for and you have plantar fasciitis and you're thinking to yourself, why in the heck am I doing this? You're going after that nerve, okay? And you're gonna accentuate the motion at the foot. That's one example. If you have maybe calf cramps where you're running a marathon and your calf's always cramped and you don't know why and your nutrition is great and you can't figure it out, your calf cramps could actually be coming from the nerve impingement. So there, what you'll do is you'll 
isolate a little bit more of the calf. You might even get a rope that really pulls the foot up towards the shin a little bit more so you can get more of a stretch right on the calf. So the nerve can slide through the calf better, okay? You might have constant hamstring pulls that's related to the sciatic nerve. So the same thing. You can even here just take your hands and put it right in the center of the hamstring and then do kind of a aggravated floss this way where you're really pinning down the actual hamstring and getting the nerve to slide through. That's a great thing to do if you have like tight hamstrings or you actually feel the discomfort in the hamstrings. Then you can just get in there and just pin that down and then do actual treatment on the nerve in this way. Okay? But a lot of times sciatic nerve flossing will come from the hip or back, and then you just want to do it repeatedly throughout the day. Nerves love motion, so this isn't something you'll do like 10 times once in the morning. You'll do it more consistently throughout the day, maybe in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, you know, 30 to 50 reps a day, just kind of working it consistently to keep it loose. All right?